So Rosetta is a really audacious space mission and it's probably one of the most difficult and complex missions that the European Space Agency has ever carried out. The objective of Rosetta was to send a spacecraft to make a rendezvous with a comet, go into orbit around that comet and map it and measure it remotely, but also drop a small probe to land onto the surface of the comet to make in situ measurements. Huit, sept, six, cinq, quatre, trois, deux, unité, feu. Getting to the comet has been a real challenge. The spacecraft has travelled something like six and a half billion kilometres around the solar system, spending its first six years in the inner solar system picking up energy as it flew past Mars once and the Earth three times. Finally, last August, it arrived at the comet and entered an orbit around it, and since then it's been taking spectacular images of the nucleus. So the big day really comes on Wednesday, on the 12th. And on that day, the small lander, which weighs about 100 kilos and is called Philae, is going to be separated from the main spacecraft and is going to fall down towards the comet and land on the comet nucleus. Navigating Rosetta has been a real challenge. The orbit of the spacecraft around the comet has been measured very, very accurately in order to characterise the gravitational field of the nucleus. The landing is now planned for this coming Wednesday, November the 12th, and at that time the comet will be something like half a billion kilometres from the Earth. That means that radio signals from the spacecraft will take something like 28 minutes to get to the ground. So it's very important that when we're talking about times of what's happening on Wednesday, we're clear about what we mean. And the times here are actually what are called Earth-received times. They're times in UTC or GMT, so they're the clock time that we see on the wall in the UK. So the first key event is at 1930 UT on Tuesday the 11th and at that point the people at the European Space Operations Centre at Darmstadt will make a decision based on the detailed orbit determination that had been done by tracking over the last few days. So then there is a whole sequence of events that take place associated with preparing both the spacecraft and the lander for the separation and the landing. So a key point then takes place just after 7am on Wednesday morning when Rosetta fires its thrusters to put it on a collision course with the comet nucleus. There is then a very short period of time when the controllers have to confirm the trajectory before they give the final go for the separation. And the separation is currently scheduled for two hours after that, so just after 9am on Wednesday morning. And at that point, the Philae lander is ejected from the main spacecraft using a mechanical system. The ejection will be at something like 21 centimeters a second. So the velocity of Philae towards the comet is then something like one meter per second, which is a slow walking pace. And Philae then will fall towards the comet nucleus. About 40 minutes after the separation, the main spacecraft will do a deflect manoeuvre to take it off a collision course with the comet. So just shortly after separation, the main spacecraft will take some images of the lander as it moves away. So all this time, the Philae probe is falling towards the comet nucleus, and it takes something like seven hours before landing. The expected start of the landing window is around 15.22, so about 20 minutes past 3 p.m. UK time, and it could be as late as 16.02, so there's about a 40-minute window for landing and receipt of uh, signal. But hopefully we'll very quickly know after around 4 p.m. tomorrow that the landing has been successful. And the first things that the lander does is it's going to take some panoramic pictures of the landing site and send them back via the orbiter. Before Rosetta got to the comet, we really didn't know what to expect. And people estimated that the probability of a successful landing was somewhere around 70%. But now we can see that it's a really chaotic surface. 
and it's much rougher and more difficult place to land on than we'd expected. And so the probability is now somewhere near a 50% or so. So it really is going to be a tense day on Wednesday. The best place to follow what's going on is the ESA website. The URLs here, there's the Rosetta blog site, which is updated regularly, and there's the live streaming as well.